Hey everybody and welcome back. Today what we're going to talk about hand placement on the golf club. Extremely important. Like I've shown you guys the grip and how you get the left pressure point on the left side of the shaft, which remember Mr. Hogan had a reminder cord. What was the reminder cord for? To teach him how to put his hand on the club and do whatever else? I mean, you're talking about a world-class professional golfer who has a reminder cord that reminder cord is basically in my opinion to remind him don't ever put this pressure point in the left thumb on the right side of the golf shaft just don't do it he's trying to control the left side or the lead side of the shaft whether you want to believe it or not it's just the way it is. Now let's talk about hand placement because I've done a grip video before. If we get like this and we take this hand and we go like this and we turn it here and we bring it down, we put the fingers right here like this, we close the hand, we put it on, you can see clearly how this left pressure point, if this is the center of the shaft, okay, the pressure point of the left hand is right here. Now watch what this does. It almost looks like from this position, I'm here, right? So look at the angle of my hand. From here, it kind of looks like I'm pointing the gun right into the ground. Because I've done this, I've left the pressure point of the thumb there, and I've got this club. Now when I go to the top, look at how I've got this thing. It is not going to move. There is no air, and we've already discussed that before. So now, when you put the right hand on, the right hand, because a lot of people think, well, Mr. Hogan, you know, pointed the pistol and all these things. Well, a lot of people think, hey, I'm going to point the pistol to the golf ball. And then when you do that, watch what happens. I'm going to point the pistol to the golf ball, and that kind of looks like what Mr. Hogan was doing, but it's not. When he pointed, when he got the right hand under here and he pointed the pistol down, he is pointing the pistol straight down to the ground. And I mean straight down to the ground, okay? Not to the golf ball, straight to the ground. So now all of a sudden we get our hand on here. I'm gonna point the pistol to the ground and I'm gonna grab it. And then when I do that, now you can see the left hand looks like it's pointing a pistol to the ground, not to the golf ball. The right hand is pointing the pistol to the ground. And when you do this, you are going to feel so connected to the sides of your body because you're not doing any of this stuff or the way that most people are teaching it. Both hands point the pistols to the ground. And you can only do it with the way that I just showed you. So now all of a sudden, it's pointing to the, the pistol's pointing to the ground. Now look at my posture. Now, because I've got both pistols pointing to the ground, look how I'm connected. So now let's add in our little point the rifle where we want to go. Everything's down. Look at how this is exactly what Mr. Hogan was doing. Period. The hands are not like this where the pistol will be pointing over here and this one's pointing in no man's land which is how most people grab the club today like this okay doesn't work but now we're going to point the pistol down we're going to point the pistol down we're going to come in from underneath just like mr hogan showed in the uh the beach video when he was with that couple went like this he wraps the left pressure point of the thumb is on the left side it's not way over here on the left side guys it's slightly just you know one mil of movement to the lead side of the shaft so now that pistol's pointing down now i've got this one so i come i take the pistol i'm pointing my hand to the ground so then all of a sudden i'm going to leave that there like i've got it i'm going to bring these two fingers underneath and then i'm going to wrap it again and look what it just did to my hands this is mr hogan guys and then all of a sudden it's here there and by doing this correctly and getting my hand placement on this club correctly it has now engaged the sides of my pecs the connections with my arms but it's not this it's not let's turn the elbows in and do this because now my connection gets more on this part of my pec instead of feeling like it's on the side of my body but when i do this correctly and i'm like oh okay that's pretty simple that's pretty simple. Now my connection points are no longer on this part of my pec, but they are on this part of my pecs. Okay? Same thing. It's just doink. That's it. But I'm not doing this crap. 
like people think, because why? Oh, well, in the book, it showed the ropes and all these different things. I promise you, go look at Mr. Hogan's swing, and it is not this. It's not. It is this. And now, all of a sudden, because my hand placement is on here correctly, look at what's going on. And because now I've got these things connected to the sides of my pecs, not on top of my pecs, now it's real easy for me to make this one-piece takeaway because everything is connected, period. If I do it and I go like this with my arms like everybody thinks about and I get here, watch what happens. My hands want to get more involved. So my hands can go, wait a minute, I'm doing what they're saying and I flip this club inside too soon. But if I do it like Mr. Hogan, grab the club, watch this. I'm just turning my body, guys. Did this club go inside? The hands are still inside of the club head. And then all of a sudden, when it starts to go set, there it goes. We come up. We get there. The elbow's down, just like Mr. Hogan. Here we go. And then it's this way, coming into the ball. It just doesn't get any better. But it's all this nonsense of everybody saying, well, golly, in the book, it's like this. And the elbows are pointing at all these different things. They are. They absolutely are. But let me show you another secret that Mr. Hogan had that a lot of people just don't understand. So now all of a sudden, Mr. you have to think about the shaft as a straight line. Because, I mean, pretty much, look at it, it's a straight line. It's exactly what it is. Well, most people today, they are like this. So see how my hands are in front of, and this is not a camera angle trick. Let me try to get as square to you as I can. Most people get like this, where this lead hand is going to be in front of the club face of the shaft. Mr. Hogan, watch this, the hands are visually, the club is like this, okay? So now the hands are behind the golf ball, if there's a golf ball right here. The hands are behind it, they're not in front of it. But everybody thinks, so let's move the hands in front of it. But I can guarantee you there is not one image online. I don't care. You show it to me. Show it to me where Mr. Hogan's hands are in front of the golf ball. They are behind the golf ball. And when they're behind the golf ball and he's connected like this, we all look at it and his hands, believe it or not, from every camera angle that we have seen, his hands are on the trail side of his belt buckle, are pretty much at his belt buckle. They are never on the lead side of the belt buckle. Why? Because he's trying to keep everything behind the ball. He's not trying to say, I'm starting with my hands in front of the ball and then I'm going to hit down on this thing. It's not how it works. He's starting from a basically a neutral shaft position to even a negative shaft position. This would be positive. No, no, no good. Mr. Hogan, you do not see him in this position. Even with the driver, he's more like this. Like this, look where my hands are. Look where this grip is at. His hands are always going to be behind the golf ball at setup. So when we can learn to get our hands placed on here correctly, you will start be going, oh, wow, this is cool. But watch this, because Mr. Hogan, believe it or not, in my opinion, just like Mo Norman. Mo Norman, oh, I'm going to start from here to hit the ball because the takeaway is the hardest move to work on. Okay, great, Mo. That sounds great. Well, what did Mr. Hogan do? Watch this, guys. When you do this hand placement the way that I'm telling you, and then all of a sudden it's like, let's do it a different way. We're going to take this hand and go over here, and we're going to put it like this, and then I'm going to come on here, and I'm going to put this one under like this. Look how I'm set up. I am not like this, but when I'm set up like this, my elbow is pointing to my lead hip socket. My right elbow, because I'm like this, is pointing to my lead hip socket. It is not like this to where I've got my elbows pointing into me. My elbows have to be pointing at the hip sockets, not in here. So all of a sudden you're like, okay, got this grip. My hands are behind the ball. I'm set up like Mr. Hogan. This is great. This left elbow is pointing at this hip socket. This right elbow, without me doing this crap, is pointing at the right hip socket. So now all of a sudden it's like, man, this can't get any easier. I'm going to feel like I'm not going to do anything with my hands. I'm not going to do anything with my arms. I'm just going to go, think, just like this. I'm going to turn my chest. And when I do that, 
Look what just happened. The club moves three and a half feet off the ball. And then now, because we learned in the other word, does rotation begin with the hands? When do the hands roll? Right there to take us to the top. So just understand how important this hand placement is because one hand placement, Mr. Hogan's, keeps our hands behind the golf ball and it points the pistol down and it gets everything to look like Mr. Hogan. The other way, traditional golf swing, everything is like this. My hands are forward. When I look down at this perspective, I can almost guarantee you I'm going to hit a block or a push or a cut or a bad shot to the right. But when I get here and I look at this and I'm like, there's my line. My hands are forward. Oh, my God. Everything's going to go to the right. I bring my hands back. Now it's like, oh, my gosh, I can see that line. Why? Why? This is what's incredibly cool. When I have my target line, which everybody talks about the railroad tracks, that was the worst idea to ever hit golf in human history, in my opinion, because, oh, you got the, the flight line, then you got the alignment line in the body, we're going to get them together and make this railroad track that goes this way. Mr. Hogan did not set up square to a railroad track on any golf swing he ever made. Never, just never happened. So all of a sudden now, when Mr. Hogan is neutralizing his hands, his hands are neutralizing the shaft. So if I have a line here that represents the flight line, and then all of a sudden I'm going to, you know, neutralize my hands, I am now creating between the relationship of the shaft and the club face a 90 degree angle but if i don't get here and i push this forward i have now pushed the 90 degree angle out to the right you'll see it all day long put a club on the ground and then say okay i know that i've got this shaft or whatever on the ground to represent the flight line of the golf ball okay and then take your club put it in your hands grip it the different way like everybody else does and then put it there and look at that shaft you're going to see how now this 90 degree angle is pointing out to the right Allah. but now let's do it the way mr hogan did because not only did he neutralize his hands with the proper hand placement and what it does to the body when you do this now let's get the hands behind the golf ball and when i look at this 90 degree angle now it's no longer going out to the right it's going down my target line so now it's like okay which is why mr hogan he'd do his waggle he looks at it one time comes back he knows where the ball is going because he can see the 90 degree angle on the ground. He doesn't have to keep looking up to see where his target is because he knows. And then he's just, you know, doing all these waggles and everything and, you know, moving his feet around and, you know, picking up things and getting this motion to work. And then, bam, off to the races. So just remember, there is a reason for the hand placement. There is a reason that... We are neutralizing the shaft into a neutral position or even a slightly negative position. Positive would be this way, like everybody else is teaching you to swing it right now, which is setting this 90 degree relationship between the shaft and my target line. If you're doing it the way most teachers are going to teach you, you are automatically visually setting everything up to go to the right. You just are. But now, let's do everything right, just like Mr. Hogan said. He's going to, most people think it's bend the knee in, but we've already learned it's point our rifle where we want to go. That's actually going to bend this knee in, which makes the shoulders slightly open. Now I'm going to get here, and I'm going to make this correct thing with the hand placement. I get there. The shaft is neutral. I can see the 90-degree relationship, and this is where I'm at because all of a sudden we're here, and then it's trigger. Take the club away. Pretty damn simple. All right, guys. Hope it helps. We'll look for you in the next video.